and welcome back to Neo Psychology with me, your teacher, Mr. Neo, the channel where I teach online psychology lessons to my wonderful students. Today we're carrying on with the unit of memory and we're looking at lesson six, explanations for forgetting retrieval failure. Let's get started. Starter, have you ever had the experience of looking at a photograph from your younger days or visiting a place you grew up and all sorts of memories come flooding back to you? Why do you think this is? Yeah, I remember I went back to like my primary school and then I suddenly was like, oh yeah, do you remember that time when that happened over there, right? All these memories come flooding back. That's what we're going to look at today. In lesson one, we learn that the duration of long-term memory is effectively unlimited. So why do we appear to forget information from it? The main reason we forget material from our long-term memory is because the material is not accessible. We can't get to it. Even though it is available, it is actually present. This is likely to be due to a lack of triggers or cues. So. We've got a few learning objectives today. We're going to look at encoding specificity principle, context dependent forgetting, state dependent forgetting, and then we're going to evaluate all of this. So let's start with encoding specificity principle. What is that? That sounds complicated. Don't worry, it's not. A cue is a trigger of information that allows us to access a memory. Tolving discovered what he called the encoding specificity principle, ESP, that states that a cue has to be both present at encoding when we learn the material and present at retrieval when we recall it, when we're recalling it for remembering to take place. It follows that if the cues available at encoding and retrieval are different, there will be some forgetting. Forgetting in long-term memory is mainly due to retrieval failure. The failure to find an item of information because of insufficient cues during retrieval. So, what is retrieval failure? What is a cue? Complete the definition. Give that a go now, please. Right? Retrieval failure is a form of forgetting. It occurs when we don't have the necessary cues to access memory. The memory is available but not accessible unless a suitable cue is provided. Now what is a cue? A cue is a trigger of information that allows us to access a memory. Indirect cues may be external, could be environmental context, or they could be internal, mood or degree of drunkenness. Okay, and we're going to look at these in a bit more detail now. So that's encoding specificity principle. Can you identify one thing you've learned about ESP? Why do you think learning about ESP is important? What was the hardest part to understand about the encoding specificity principle? And what questions has this raised for you? If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm sure one viewer will answer it. And that's learning objective one done. I'm ticking it off. We're moving on to learning objective two, context dependent forgetting. Recall of knowledge or episodes is greater when the environmental context pre present during learning and retrieval are the same. When the context is different, it is more difficult to retrieve information. Godden and Badley, here's their procedure. What did they find? Divers learned a word list either on land or underwater and were then recalled uh, and then recall was tested on either land or underwater. What do you think was found? What factor affected recall? The highest recall was when the initial context matched the recall environment. Okay, If they learnt it underwater, they would recall it better underwater. If they learnt it on land, they would recall it better on land. It was concluded that the external cues available at learning were different from the ones available at recall, and this led to retrieval failure. If you learnt it on land and had to, re and had to recall it in water, or you, if you learnt it in water and, and had to recall it on land, your retrieval was poorer. You would forget that information more. That demonstrated retrieval failure. Here's an application question with Paul. Paul drove his friends out for an evening meal. Just as they got to the restaurant car park, he suddenly realised he'd forgotten his wallet. I keep my wallet and jacket in different places, but always pick them up together, Paul said. But because it's such a lovely evening, I decided not to bother with the jacket. Question. Can you explain how Paul leaving his jacket meant he also forgot his wallet. Use the key terms in your answer that we spoke about already. 
quote parts of the question in your application answer, please. Okay, pause the video, write your answer now. Otherwise, let's have a look at the answer. In normal circumstances, Paul would remember his wallet because he remembered his jacket first. His jacket is a cue. It's a context related because it's part of his environment to trigger his memory of his wallet. So if he doesn't pick up his jacket first, then the cue is absent and he forgets his wallet. This is an example of context dependent forgetting. And that's context dependent forgetting. Can you identify one thing you've learned about context dependent forgetting? Why do you think it's important to learn about this? How does this apply in real life? What was the hardest part to understand about it? And again, if you have any questions, feel free to write them down and ask me in person. Let's have a look at state dependent forgetting. Now, recall of knowledge is greater when an individual's physical or psychological state is similar at encoding and retrieval. When these states are different, it is more difficult to retrieve information. So, if you're happy when you learn a piece of information, you're more likely to recall it when you're feeling happy. Godwin et al. in 1969 procedure. Godwin et al. asked male volunteer participants to remember a list of words when either drunk or sober, and then recall the list after 24 hours when either drunk or sober again. What do you think Goodwin et al. found? When would recall would have been the highest? When would forgetting be the highest? Recall was best when in the same state at both times. Information learned when drunk is more available when drunk later on. Information learned sober is more available when sober later on. And this supports state-dependent forgetting. You can see the graph on the right there. So those that learnt the words sober and recalled them drunk had the worst recall. Those that learnt them, however, those that learnt the words sober and recalled them sober did the best, and those that uh, learnt them drunk and recalled them drunk did okay too. So if you're in the same psychological or mental state as when you learnt the thing you're trying to remember, you're more likely to remember it. Can you identify one thing you've learned about state-dependent forgetting? Why do you think learning about this is important? How does it apply in real life? What was the hardest part to understand? And do you have any questions? There we go. That was state-dependent forgetting. We're moving on to the final learning objective. We're going to discuss and evaluate retrieval failure. Here we go. What are some of the strengths and limitations of explanations for forgetting retrieval failure? There is research support for the importance of cues. Students often struggle to recall information in exams, experiencing a retrieval failure of learned information. Gallagher tested whether including information from class lectures in test items as retrieval cues enhance students' performance on tests. Performance on identical tests with and without these cues showed that the included cues group recalled significantly more than the no cues group. These results suggest that the selective use of retrieval cues on tests can help students overcome retrieval failure. There are often times when you're in class and you go, oh, I can't remember that thing. And the teacher can just give you a cue of one word and that one word go, oh yeah, it's about that, 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 and you can recall it all, right? So you were having retrieval failure, but the cue has helped you retrieve it. You've got to learn a way of learning this content so you can remember those cues in the exam and then you can retrieve all the information and ideally write it down. This is supporting evidence, so it is a strength. However, retrieval cues do not always work. Although there is evidence to suggest that retrieval cues prevent forgetting, there is not always, this is not always the case. In most of the research on retrieval cues, participants must learn word lists. However, everyday learning is far more complex. For example, learning about the working memory model requires complex associations that are not easily triggered by a single cue. This suggests that retrieval cues are unable to explain all types of learning and forgetting. So, this is a limitation. Retrieval cues do not always work. Finally, one strength is that retrieval cues have real-world application. 
People often go to another room to get an item, but forget what they wanted, but they remember again when they return to the room when they came from. When we have trouble remembering something, it is probably worth making the effort to recall the environment in which you learned it first, context-dependent forgetting. This shows how research can remind us of strategies we use in the real world to improve our recall. Anything we use in real life is useful. How can this psychology be applied to everyday life? Real world application is a strength. And there we go. Can you summarize each evaluative point into your own words? If you want to challenge yourself, can you summarize the evaluative points into exactly 10 words? That's learning objective four done. Lesson six, explanations for forgetting retrieval failure completed. Next lesson is lesson seven, accuracy of eyewitness testimony, misleading information. Um, well done, my neo psychologist. Great job today. I've been Mr. Neo. God bless and peace. I'm feeling like well. I feel like a prince. I'm feeling myself. I'm loaded with bills. Cause I was blessed with no uncle Phil. Don't know how it feels. I wanted to flex. They told me to chill. I'm making a flip. My life is a flick. Now load up the flip. Yeah.